Good afternoon, legends. It's that time of the week where I give you all of the options and potentially the sells there heading into the week there. Round 19 is the team list. We've got some fun faces there. Plenty of the youngsters there. Atkinson, Fletcher Sharp, and Jai Gray on the front screen there. So good to see those guys getting an opportunity this week. And we kick it off with Jai Gray at fullback for the Bunnies. A very, very important potential pickup this week. And it looks like Phil Trail probably four weeks out. And for a lot of us, it makes it a bit of a tough type, type of purchase, given I do think you want all of your 21 to be playing for the majority of the year. So at least with Gray, you know that you're going to get good scoring out of him. He's still fairly cheap, obviously, after a couple of good games in there, especially his most previous game was uh, was one of his best there for sure. And had a lower, tougher game against the Panthers, but we can can definitely forgive him for that one there. So yeah, Jai Gray, really, really interesting, cheapy wing fullback prospect, that's for sure. If you're interested in him, he should be able to do a really good job there. We do have Jack White, and I think is still a really solid option. Cover center, covers half, and we know how tough the half position is now with Nico Hines out. Unfortunately, a tibia fracture as well as a syndesmosis injury. So how, did, how you do that at training is absolutely incredible. So yeah, thoughts and prayers out to Nico. And the only positive in this is that he is back for the final series. And if the Sharkies can get themselves, hopefully a home final at least, whether that's in fourth or, you know, fifth or sixth gets them a home final, which would be helpful for him and gives them an opportunity and a chance at least to to take this, you know, take him deep into the final series, give him a, give him a good chance there. Cody Walker you're holding on to with the forwards there. Damien Cook and Pete Mamazel are still there, so nothing changes with the decision on Damien Cook. Obviously coming off a of 47, you'd hope that it uh, you know, that score improves this week. I'm definitely hoping as an owner myself. Davin Wiley, you can easily hold this week with a few of the guys out. You've got Cheekham, who is starting alongside Jai Arrow. So I wonder, I wonder, that's the big question. If you are looking to go for Keon Kolomatangi, who was a really good purchase this week, what's going to happen after this week? It looks like Arrow is getting one more week. And then when the boys come back from Origin, then he'll you know, be he'll be out of the side and you'll have this season ending, ending surgery. So for those that are holding Jai Arrow, a massive boost for you guys that he continues to keep that spot. And as I said with Keon, it's just a guess now whether he sticks in this middle role or he goes back to the edge next week with Jai Arrow in, uh, you know, going to be, I going to say retiring, going to be retiring for the season anyway and having surgery. You'd imagine that Murray being one of the better 13s in the game, he stays in that role, but they are winning, winning lots of games with Keon Kulmatungi in that middle position. And then Liam LeBlanc on the bench there is the only real interesting cheapy that, uh, yeah, who's not that interesting in terms of a, a buy for us this week anyway. For the Finns, we do see Trey Fuller back. Great news for my squad, and I very much hope he gets an opportunity in round 20 as well. Otherwise, I may have to be trading him out. But Jermaine Asako sticks with his role there. He's still not a terrible purchase now that he's got that buy out of the way. He should play the rest of the games, and it's under 600K for a guy that can, can definitely go off. We know that. Don't go buying Fuller, that's for sure. Farnworth coming off a few low ones. You get him a little bit cheaper, but I do think there's better centers, even though he's going to play every game from here. Max Plath has actually ended up in that nine jersey. So what that means for him is obviously very, very likely to play 80 minutes on this front. They do have Sean O'Sullivan, who's on the interchange bench. So I wonder if it actually hurts Plath or not that he goes into that role because you'd imagine he doesn't run the footy as much as he was in, you know, in that 13 role. So... Does, is, is O'Sullivan there for some type of cover or does he go to nine for a bit and Plath can play some 13? I hope that's the play and, and Plath's there for like 60 minutes at nine and then 20 minutes at 13. I'm not sure if that's actually going to you know play out. I hope it does, but if it doesn't, it's a bit of a worry. So I think you can wait and hold off this week if you're looking at potentially grabbing him just for that reason alone, just to make sure you see how things roll out. Lemuelu is still not the, the worst play there in the mid 500s. You and Aiken, I've got him and Fafida, I think, as, as two of the close to must haves in their positions, just because I think they'll play each and every game for the rest of the season. And I, I did get it wrong on the, on, the, uh, on the word doc there. I put 724 or whatever it is when he's actually 720, no, 727 when he's actually 777. So sorry for that. That was a mistake. He's still fairly expensive, but. To get a player like that in center that's very, very consistent, you know, 40s to 70s, that type of range, he is a great one to have that plays the remainder of the season. So Sean O'Sullivan's coming ahead of 
Anthony Milford, even though he's back in the reserves there. So, yeah, very interesting first game. It's going to be a fun one to go through, and I'll get my uh, tips in and tell you guys about those in the next uh, yeah, couple of days there for sure. Sharky's come up against the Tigers. So obviously, the bad news for Hines leaves the door open for Braden Trindle at a fairly inexpensive price to under 500k as the goal kicking main general play kicker and yeah the, the guy that's going to get a lot of the stats he averages just a tick under 50 without uh without Heinz there so we saw that obviously at the beginning of last year we've seen that at times this year as well so he's definitely an interesting one and Atkinson a little bit cheaper than him we need him to be the main half and he's just not going to be with Trindle being there with you know Trindle was taking over main half duties last week and overcalling Hines. So he's definitely going to be overcalling Atkinson, let's just say that. Kale Iro, a very easy hold. Ronaldo, if you do own him, a hold as well, not a buy. Moving to the forwards, Teague Wilton moves back into that starting role. And you do see, uh, yeah, he's not there actually. There you go. There you go. We've got Talakai is out. What was the go with Talakai being out? Did he get suspended? Yeah, he was suspended. There you go. So Wilton just comes straight back into that starting side. And he's a lot cheaper, obviously. The big question here is going to be, does he actually keep his spot, right? Or does Talakai come back in and, and take that starting spot when he does return? Blake Bradley, a couple too many low games in amongst some big scores, so I think you can hold off on him. Cam McKinnis, still a terrific mid buy. Obviously, the buy he misses out in round twenty with the buy. So yeah, keep that in mind. But I do think long term he's a great uh, person to have in your sides. And if Hines is going to be out, I think they'll be fighting for for a spot in yeah in the in the eight really like fighting for like a 5-6 spot, really, or, or seventh if, if things continue to go uh, in, in a bad way. They lost five out of six, and is it going to switch around this week? Obviously, it's against the Tigers, and you'd hope so, but they do need to build some confidence this week. Britton Nicker, obviously a really, really good purchase still, but he's getting more expensive, and he doesn't have Hines next to him anymore. So just keep that in mind that he's likely, well, he's definitely going to be having Atkinson next to him, which we know you know is a good player in, in, him, in, his, in his own right, but... I definitely think it helps having Nico next to next to Britain Nicara because of the threat that he poses. So still a really good purchase, but obviously misses next week as well. For the Tigers, Dream Buller is there at the back, coming off a, a really good game. You know, very, very up and down at the moment. Galvin's the only one here in this back seven that you that you really want. Stefano, easy hold. I wouldn't go purchasing. John Bateman you could look at over the next few weeks for sure. Samuel Fainu. With an easy hold, Api, Api Coruscant, you could buy if you, you know, if you don't want to spend up on the other guys in that list that I showed you in the best 17 that you can purchase and you want someone that can play the rest of the year, Api Coruscant is that guy. I just think he'll be a little bit under that top four hookers in scoring there. Fnor Bolle, uh, a really, really good game from him last week. We do see Ruben Porter back into the 17 jersey for anyone holding on to him and needs an, another number. That's good news. And then Stafford Toa is in the 20 jersey, so he could easily come in for Fartape uh, or he could move to the wing and Lob comes out of this side as well. So, yeah, not too much to report on from the Tigs. Titans come up against the Eels in this one, and we don't learn very much at all from the Titans here. So we've got a couple of things to mention, and I do think there'll be a few changes on game day. Both of them has been named in the centers again, so that's frustrating. He's probably going to end up with dual position very soon, but Phil Sami's been named at 17 for some reason, right? And then we've got AJ Brimson in the 18 jersey. Tanner Boyd comes out of this side as a straight swap for Jaden Campbell. So happy days. For all Campbell holders, I'm very sad now that he's back. Obviously, missing the first, the last two weeks, I needed to sell him to get 17 on the park in those weeks. So, you know, that helped me make some ranks, which is good. And, uh, you know, Campbell scores before that helped me make some ranks. But I'm very worried against this Eels side, what Campbell can come up with and his, uh, you know, his goal kicking as well. So he's a very, very good purchase, I think, this week in his return game from that hand injury. Kenny keeps his spot at fullback, but what's going to happen here? Do you have Brimson or Sammy? One of those two guys coming into the centers, both of them all moves back to an edge. Do you see Cleese Haas go into the 13 role? Does he go straight to the bench? How do we play this one out, right? If Brimson, Brimson comes in, I do likely suspect that either Sammy will go to center or Brimson will, and then Sammy probably stays there as that 17th man. Probably. Or they just, yeah, or Sammy comes out for Brimson, basically, and and then they move Cleese Hart to someone back to the bench. I think I'm seeing some type of movement happening. At least this time, they didn't name, name Jacob Alec at 
center and then on an hour before move switch in with both or more like they always do but this this back line it has so many niggling injuries especially phil sami so maybe he is just better to come off the off the bench this week and i do hope we do get to see aj brimson and for that fellow that i told not to get chris randall uh it's Worked out poorly uh, in that front if he actually starts here at 13 again and both of more is now just a center apparently. So that frustrates my super coach team. But David Fafita is still a really great purchase. He's again, one of those only two players that I think plays every single one of these games from here on in, which is super important, obviously. And uh, yeah, Campbell, Keeney, good stuff for Keeney holders. has been great. Been a great ride, that's for sure. For the Eels, we do see Blaze selling move to the centers with Lorenzo Mulatalo on the wing. So I actually think that hurts Blaze a little bit more. He's been on the back of some lovely shape there. The only kind of tries that they've been scoring in recent history is that of Blaze telling you on the wing. So I think that's a little bit frustrating. Gutho and Brown will run the show. Dejan Assi in the seven jersey there. So if you have got Dylan Brown, hopefully a much improved game from him. Brennan Hands keeps his spot in nine, but Matt Arthur in the 14. He also really changed it up, that's for sure. So the back line there, obviously, and then you see Matt Dury come in to start over Bryce Cartwright. So I definitely didn't expect that to happen. I'm not sure if it will, but Cartwright is in 17. So that's massive news for any owners of him. It's a very, very clear hold, but it shows that, I keep going to say Brad Arthur, Coach Barrett is going to do you know, all different things with this side now that they're really out of, out of a shot of, of making the eight. Ryan Madison still a really good purchase this week. I think yes, a buy next week, but uh, yeah, his price for what we know he can score in big minutes on the edge there is absolutely priceless. But you do now have Matt Dury starting. If that's the case, then you have Lane and Cartwright who could both easily play on the edges there for yeah, Madison. I don't expect Dury to play 80. And then you have Charlie Geimer in the start as well. So Madison could lose minutes. He could just play 70 or 80. You know, all of it could do, could work out really well. It's just um, it's just not an easy thing to to kind of work out for sure. And then you've got Charlie there with yeah, I think in a really good situation to be a buy. Like he's got Lane and Cartwright on there that could take minutes, um, but we obviously don't need you know or could take his start. I should say we only need him to play forty five or fifty minutes and and keep the spot for the rest of the season for him to be a good option there. I think he's ahead of Luca Moretti, which means. When they do get Kelma Tuolangi back, that that Luca ends up in a spot, um, yeah, out of this side, and then Charlie ends up probably back onto the interchange bench, where the you know they start one of these other guys. You've got Makatoa, who you know Charlie Geimer's ahead of, Luca Meredith's ahead of as well. So yeah, and then we remove Greg can't crack a spot in this side either. So yeah, plenty to think about with that team. I'm sort of on and off with Madison as a buy for myself. So I'll uh, I'll do some study after this video as to what exactly I need and, and what money I kind of need to save up to to get to some of these guys and, and make some of these really cool decisions for our sides as well. So yeah, keep you, uh, I'll keep you posted as to what I'm thinking at the moment. There's plenty of research to be done and yeah, a lot of guys to potentially pick up. So yeah, I'll work that out over the next few days and, and get back to you on that one. So there you go. All right, let's go on to the Broncos and the Dragons. On their back seven front, we see Josh Rogers come into the seven. Not really relevant fantasy wise here or super coach for us. Jensen and Wilson start, so Wilson starting for me is good. P. I just really don't want to play. He probably scores all right against the Dragons, but it's just not exciting at all. And their bench stays the same. You've got Tyson Smoothie though. Oh, sorry. Change stays the same except for Moser coming in as backup hooker. And Tyson Smoothie's been named at 13. So I wonder if that will switch with Hetherington uh, to you know to begin this game or not. Or they start with Smoothie for some lower minutes. Hetherington comes on into that 13 role after that. So expect Hetherington to play still big minutes off the bench and hopefully Willison somewhere near that 50 minutes again after a, a slightly lower minute game last week at 40, but still really, really good. And hopefully for Pekura owners and players that he ends up going well this week. So not too much else to, to really say on the Broncos. Most of these guys have played a game this year. And those that haven't, you know, Blake Moses there, he's going to be out of the site next week, but Jordan Ricky does return. For the Dragons, we do see a very similar back seven apart from Jesse Mashki, and then Tupelotu comes in for Lomax there as well. you got Max Fainai and Michele Ravalawa is a nice welcome back as well. So he just returned? I can't remember. Yeah, he returns. Um, and Tupelotu was there last week. That's right. Raymond Fitala Mariner is back, in, back on deck. But he, uh, yeah, straight into the starting side as well, which is good for him. You see Luciano Lelua 
and Harm Sele on the bench there with Couchman and Murdoch Masilla. They're in that one. So Eisenhuth's an easy hold. Sua, you now have him for the for the rest of the year, which is helpful. Well, until they're by anyway, next week, I should say. Uh, but yeah, he's out of origin now, so you don't have to worry about backing up from that. And DeBellin, a solid enough hold, but they've got you know some plenty of, of firepower on the interchange bench now. And Jack Bird's still in the 18 jersey. Good news for Jacob Little owners right now. Farmanu Brown is in the 20 jersey, not the interchange. So that's the big kind of news there on that front. Obviously holding Little. I don't think you're buying now with the threat of Farmanu Brown. But he did well enough last week with that try. Alrighty, Eagles end of the night. So Tommy Turbo, he's back. Back in the fullback jersey. Unfortunately, Cola is out, as we know, four weeks or so for him. Hopefully, yeah, if anyone's looking at buying Tom or... If you have Lehigh Hop wider, you might actually keep you know both of those in that spot for, for a little bit longer. Tommy Talao moves to the centers with Lehigh getting on that left wing. And uh, it's going to be an interesting little combination with Lehigh and Tommy Talao. I think good news for Garrick that he's got Saab next to him because he's such a dynamic finisher. So fast that uh, yeah, you can help get him those, those try assists, which is good. Or get down the outside and then pass it back to Garrick on the inside for those types of tries, which is cool. And he's obviously yeah threat in the air too. So I think that's very helpful that he's actually there, but there's still a little bit of a worry uh, as to him. Yeah, he obviously went off with the injury last week, um, but name to play, so hopefully he's all good. But Tommy is a very interesting one, guys. If you're looking at him, he's obviously a bigger risk. I would take Ruben over Tom just for the dual position, and we just know that he obviously has had a couple of uh, head knocks this year, but in terms of other injuries, he's much safer than that of Tommy with the soft, t- soft tissue stuff, but we know how amazing to, uh, to watch Tommy is. So yeah, if you're interested in that, go for it. An interesting cash out probably more in Supercoach would be a Jamie Humphreys. I wouldn't expect him to be getting a chance outside of this game just because DC will be back there. So that'll be fun to watch him. He's got you know plenty of wraps on him as a youngster and he you know, could be a little one to show him off this year and then we can pick him up at some point next year uh, if he gets an opportunity to play. But Toffa Sipley ends up Still in that starting spot with Josh Aloye. We see Olakua too is a very interesting option this week as well. I'm definitely contemplating Hamole on that one. And then you've got Carl Lawton playing the other 12 jersey. He'll um on the other edge, he'll be he'll be great. He always scores well out there. You got Nathan Brown there in the starting 13 role, which we expected. And if you own him, he should have another cracking score. And I wonder if the PPM will stay up. That's for sure on, on, on those two guys. But they're still really solid options. Probably the last week to grab them just because they got a buy coming up and, and their price will get out of hand a little bit. Corey Waddell moves back, uh, comes back onto the interchange bench for those that need an extra player. Um, hopefully he can help you out there for sure. And that's it for the Manly boys. And for the Knights guys, Fletcher Sharp gets that fullback jersey with Ponga out with Origin. So exciting times for Fletcher Sharp owners. Hopefully you can get a good score out of him before he hits the... Uh, he could maybe play on a wing or something like that if if there's any issues going into guys backing up next week but outside of that he's probably in a bit of strife to continue keeping his spot he might end up in 14 but really that's that spot's there for Phoenix Crossland and and Jaden Braley there Dylan Lucas in the centers Christian Mapapalangi they got Thomas Cart who is obviously a forward from from all I from all my knowledge and then uh thankfully Greg Marzu is still there to play so it was nice to see his name there after doing it well last week it looked like he was dealing with cramps and stuff at the back end so hopefully all sweet on that front and then you've got Will Price still maintains his spot in the six. So good on him. Got the win. Hopefully he can keep that spot for owners. And if you haven't bought yet, I think that he's not the worst pick at all if you think that he's going to keep his spot. Otherwise, you probably just don't to go for a Jai Gray or Jack White and all these types of guys around that price point. Jackson Hastings just continues to hit 50s and, and do good things out there. But he's obviously pretty expensive now. Danny Saifidi. Still fairly cheap. Probably the last week to grab him as well. They have a buy in round 21, so you'd get him the next two and and he'd miss that week. But um, yeah, closer to 400K now. Frizzell and Kaipis Paul keep their spots obviously in, on the edge with Dylan Lucas at at center. So I do think that Dylan can have a really good game. That will be against, most likely on that right-hand side against uh, Tommy Talau. But if he's on the left there, you know you'll get plenty of, uh, plenty of attack coming his way. Uh, Garrick makes lots of runs. We should be able to get some good tackles on that front anyway. Jaden Braley back to the bench. So if you are ready to sell him, sweet. If you if he's your hooker for the week, hold on. Sell him next week. They're in that one. I think Kaipi's ball you have to hold on as well. Some people are looking at potentially upgrading him. 
I just don't think you should be making that extra trade. We saw, you know, last week, some people were like trying to make marginal upgrades and you do see or going a little bit early or whatever, like, you know, Collar, he got injured. So if you had someone that was going to hit a 40 odd or something and, you know, yes, you got an extra 10 points from Collar, but you picked up an injury when you've used a trade. So if you just held off, you, know, you could have got a bit lucky there or who knows? Like all these things happen, right? You make that trade earlier. I got lucky and, and held off on, on trading in Hines and I was like, oh, I'll wait. He's break even still really high. I'll wait till this Tigers match up and then he gets injured. So like that extra week can sometimes be really helpful. Uh, congrats to Frizzell for his 250th last week and then Kaipis Ball, I think just hold. Hold there. You should be able to upgrade someone else and then next week or with their, in their bye week, you can move on from Kaipis Ball. Not a problem there. So that leaves us with the team list done for the week. So I'll get into some more content ready to get out for you guys tomorrow. And uh, yeah, buy, hold, risk, sell and, and all the rest of the fun stuff. So thanks so much for being here, guys. I wish you all the best of luck with selecting your round 19 teams and using those final potential trades.